This is an extraordinarily choreographed response, Bill. It feels like there is a bigger play here. Do we know, do we have any idea what it might be yet? Well, it's very interesting that uh, so far our readout from this uh, press conference in Saudi Arabia has the Saudis saying this was uh, choreographed or sponsored um, by Iran, but I haven't heard them yet, and uh, perhaps I missed it, but I haven't heard them say that the attack came from Iran. Uh, there are a number of other places it could have come by uh, from Iranian, uh, pro-Iranian militias in Iraq. It could have come from a couple other places. So uh, there, is, there is a difference, I think, between saying it was sponsored by Iran and that the attack was launched from Iran. So that's something I think we're all going to be listening out for. Uh, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is expected to land in Jeddah Saudi Arabia uh, within the next couple hours and uh, well obviously he'll be following up on this presentation by the Saudi Defense Ministry. I think the big question is the more you point the finger at Iran, whether you say they just sponsored it or whether they actually launched the attack, the question immediately becomes what are you going to do about it? And I think that uh, uh, has, there's been some hesitation on the international community's part to uh, point the finger too quickly at Iran because uh, of uncertainty over what they will do next. Do you launch a retaliatory strike? Uh, do you do something else? Uh, there's already some criticism from President Trump's uh, normal supporters that if he doesn't do more than, uh, than enact tough sanctions, he risks making uh, his administration in the United States look weak here. So there is a lot of choreography, I think, going on behind the scenes. Uh, this is probably just the first part of what I think is going to be an unfolding process as, uh, the, as the international uh, governments try to put more pressure on Tehran. Bill, one of the things the oil market will be trying to figure out is how well defended uh, are Saudi's facilities. We've seen the fact that they clearly weren't. The question is, are they now? And how critical, uh, critical a part of the kind of calculation that both Saudi and the U.S. have to go through now, kind of depending on there will be a counter punch, but there could be a punch that, come back, that comes back the other way as a result of that? Exactly. I think this has been a hugely embarrassing strike on Saudi Arabia. Uh, they are uh, perennially one of the world's biggest purchasers of, uh, of weapon systems, mostly from the U.S. They uh, have touted their access to Patriot missile systems and other, uh, other means to supposedly protect them from just these types of things. Uh, and they clearly got hit hard. And uh, I think markets and, uh, and geopolitical strategists are kind of reacting to that in a surprising way. They just didn't think Saudi would be this this vulnerable. I don't know. They, they can say that they are better prepared now, that they are uh, rounding out their defenses systems, but I think, um, I think you know, last week as it strikes show that uh, they in fact weren't ready. Uh, and uh, I think some of their hesitation in directly accusing Iran uh, for launching the strikes may be because they know that that requires a response on their part. And look, it's a small, you know, it, it's, a, it's a small, tightly packed region there. Uh, we've already seen the United Arab Emirates backing away from the Saudi led war in Yemen. And I think this also gives them caution. Listen, if, uh, if, if Iran could lead a strike that does so much damage to Saudi Arabia's crown jewel, uh, where does that put a city like Dubai if uh, they get on the wrong side of Iran and uh, this escalates into military conflict? I think there's a lot of serious thinking going on in the region about uh, what, what an escalation would mean and how serious the costs of that uh, could be.